Welcome to Lecture 10, Unreusable Code. The last chapter was on reusable objects, objects of the form, and Lecture 10 is on reusable code, meaning PL SQL code. And the objectives that we're going to cover here are program units, PL SQL libraries, and stored PL SQL libraries. Uh, stored PL SQL code in your application. That's what a program unit is. And that's specific to that particular form module. And you can have packages, procedures, functions. This is also a place where you could have um, variables for a package and you could change, you could use that as a, as a way to um, store uh, you know, a variable that you're going to be calculating off of and changing or whatever as you work through the form. Um, so program units are basically form objects that contain PL SQL code. They're stored and run within the form application. They can contain built-ins because they're purely on the form side, unlike um, PL SQL, which is stored on the server. Uh, now, PL SQL, which is stored on the server, will run faster, but it, it cannot contain forms built-ins. An advantage of having the program units is that all the PL SQL code is centralized in the form. The same PL SQL code can be used by a number of different triggers, and if you make changes, you only have to make the change in one place, and then each of the triggers is referencing that program unit, and that'll be a lot easier for you. But what's a, what really helps, too, is that it centralizes the code. Um, you can see here on the object navigator, we have a, a node for, project, uh, for program units and all the different uh, package function procedures that were built as program units are going to be there. So another option that you have is in all of your triggers, you could actually have the whole trigger be one line, which is simply an execution of a program unit and then put all the code down in the program unit. And what that means is it's a lot easier to find um, if you want to make some changes. And some people have the habit of putting all the code down in the program unit. And in a lot of cases, that makes things a lot easier for you. Because if you remember, triggers can be all over the place. They can be on different items, data blocks, buttons. And so if you have to, if um, you know you have some change that you have to make to every single trigger code because of a change in the database or requirements or whatever, a merger of a bank and suddenly you know things have restructured, um, it may be a lot easier for you to put all your code in one central location and you can do that with program units. Now when you create a program unit, you'll be right at the, um, the object navigator which we just saw. You'll be on the program unit node. Basically just click that green plus icon, that'll create a, um, a new program unit for you. And the first thing that will come up is you've got this little program unit dialog box, which you see here on the right. And you assign a name, and then you choose what kind of program unit is it is. Is it a procedure? Is it a function? Is it a package specification or package body? And then once you've finished with that, it'll launch the, uh, the PL SQL editor, which you're used to by now. Okay, now there's another thing which you can do, which is PL SQL libraries. Now, PL SQL libraries are a file of their own, and these can be edited in Forms Builder. And basically, when you want to use a PL SQL library is when you want to store program units that will be used by most of the forms, if not all of the forms in an application. And what that means is that... Um, you know, once you attach that PL SQL library, then you can reference the code that's in the PL SQL library. And it's also a way um, that you can centralize your code. And PL SQL libraries can contain built-ins, forms built-ins, and that's something you can't do in server-side PL SQL. So basically, you have a node on the module for attached libraries. In this case, I have um, a PL SQL library called Excel, which is a bunch of uh, procedures which I generically use to export um, some data into an Excel worksheet and, and maybe even to launch it or whatever. So that's something that I do in quite a number of my different forms. So I've created this PL SQL library and I attach it. 
you just go right down there where it says attach libraries, uh, click the green create node, um, the green plus button, which is creates an icon on that node, and then you'll be able to browse through and pick up the, uh, the library. Now there are a number of issues you have to take into consideration that that library should be in the path that's the same path as the um, that you have in your registry or in your form or we'll cover this a little bit more when we get to menus in chapter 13 so uh, in concerning um, the issues that involved with menus we'll be calling other forms but the same is true of the um, the PL SQL library so when take note of that when we get there now the file types that we have for PL SQL library we have three different ones um, the PLL that's the that contains source code and executable code now that's what you would have in your forms application you can also um, that has executable code so you can use that in the application that you run and you can edit that in forms builder so that's kind of the all-inclusive file type now the PLX is if you compile it and you create a PLX, then the PLX will just be a binary file that you can't read, and this will be a smaller file. It'll just contain compiled code. It's the only reason really to do that is if you want, if you're having some network traffic issues, you want to make sure you have the smallest file sizes as you can. Then you want to go with the PLX. But the PLL is different than actually like an FMB or an MMB in that it, it is fully functional. Now, if you ex convert it into a text format, that would be PLD, and that's just a text file. That would be the only one of these three files that you can open in something like Notepad. So if you want to work in Notepad as your uh, tool for writing the code, you'd start out by making a PLD, and then you could convert it into executable code uh, with the administration convert option on the file menu, and that would bring it into being a PLL or a PLX. And the benefits of this is um, reducing file size. Was, what that means is the form files are also reduced because a lot of the code is going to be in the PLL. And it also centralizes code across multiple forms. So this is, this is a, a great tool to make use of. And as you structure and strategize your forms application, it's a good idea to make use of this. There are some limitations. It cannot re reference bind variables directly. Now, if you remember in um, the trigger chapter, chapter six, we did make indirect references to bind variables via like the copy and the naming built-in. So if you're gonna make use of references to bind variables, it's gonna have to be a little bit different. You're gonna have to have code which like gets the current uh, property, current, uh, and the way we use it in the copy example in that chapter, that's a good example. Um, now, we also have PL SQL stored objects. And what I mean by PL SQL stored objects is these would be objects that are stored on the database. So this is packages, functions, procedures, and these are stored in the database and they can be called in forms just as with calling program unit from the form or the program unit from PL SQL library. There's really no difference. You just write the, the same way that you would execute that. Uh, the, there's a tremendous advantage here and the advantage is really performance gains because the database will be executing the code and returning the output parameters. And this greatly reduces network traffic because you're sending one um, request to the database. You're letting the database do the processing and the, the database is gonna be um, a server with a lot more power generally than the clients. And so you'll let the bulk of the processing be done there and I'll turn the value back to the form. So we went through that pretty quickly, and the PL SQL um, libraries and objects that we went over here are a w another way that you can maximize the use of reusing code. And um, if you continue on, you should do the demonstration. And what we'll have in the demonstration is we'll just show basically how to create a program unit, how to attach a PL SQL library, and use stored code in PL SQL objects. As usual, you go through and do your homework, and we'll have some labs in there that will give you a few more uh, hands-on experience making use of this reusable code examples. 
And just remember, you want to um, be aware of the fundamental ways of doing this now, because as you develop more and more complex applications, you should uh, strategize how to make use of these tools. So it will minimize a lot of um, your chance of having to duplicate code when you don't have to do that. So thank you, and we'll go on to the next.